Greetings, everybody. And today, as Pastor Liao mentioned, we're going to be talking about giving or generosity, another word for giving. And um, it's a very uh, sensitive topic to some people. Some people may not like it, but it is powerful and it's biblical. God talks about, the Bible talks a lot about his promises to mankind. And uh, <clears throat> most of the time, it's connected to generosity. So there are lots of promises in the Bible. And uh, most of it is connected to generosity. So when we talk about uh, giving or generosity, we are not just talking about money. We're talking about your time, we're talking about your energy, we're talking about your talent, your skills. Those are all part of, of what we have that we can give unto others. So today we're going to learn more about giving. And uh, I found a lot of scriptures in the Bible about giving. So we're going to learn more about giving. So bear with me on the scriptures. It's going to be lots of flipping through the Bibles to read through the scriptures, but please bear with me. <clears throat> so being generous in every area of your life is becoming an unselfish person. So we want to learn how to grow spiritually and we want to learn how to give and not be selfish. So what is generosity? And why is God so interested in generosity? And why he talks about generosity so much in the Bible? <laughs> so the answer is simply because generosity is love in action. You can give without loving, but you cannot love without giving. You need to learn how to give. There is no way you can love someone without giving. Whether it's your money, your energy, your time, your talent, your skills, whatever it is, we need to learn how to give and be generous. If you tell your wife you love her, but you do not, you're not generous with her, you don't really love her. If you're not generous with your kids, there's no way you love your kids because love gives. The scripture says that God so loved the world that he gave. So generosity is simply love in action. And if I'm not a generous person, if I'm not a loving person, I may think I am, but if I'm not, because love is all about giving, it's not about getting. Many songs that you listen when I travel or I go drive to work, mm -hmm. there are songs that are played in the radio. Sometimes I listen to the news and then sometimes uh, there are many songs that are being played in the radio, love songs, etc. So those are not really love songs. We Those are really actually considered last songs. They're not love songs. Last is all about getting, 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 getting. That's not love. Belief is an important word in the Bible. It's often used. Pray is an important word that has been used many, many times in the Bible. The word love is used many times in the Bible. The Bible talks a lot about love. However, the word give is used most of the time, if I'm not mistaken, thousands and thousands of times. As I was flipping through the, the scriptures in the Bible, I read a lot. There's a lot of scriptures about giving. And I managed to write down 12 points of why we should be a giver, why we should give the importance of giving. Today, we're going to share, I'm going to share with you the 12 points that I wrote about giving. So why God talks so much about giving? Simply because he is a giver. Everything that you have owned in your life is basically a gift from God. Your car, your house, your wife, your husband, your money, your job, your career, everything, your education, your whole life, your body, your breath, even the, 
breath that you breathe is given by God. The ability to earn is given by God. Everything comes from God. If God is not generous, you will have nothing. You won't be even breathing, be breathing today because he gives you air. He gives you sunshine. He gives you life. And everything else in your life is a gift from above. It's a gift from the almighty God. And God wants us to learn how to give back. So the scripture says um, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 1, it says, be imitators of me as I am Christ. Right? We learned that before, that uh, we need to be like Jesus. God wants us to be more and more like him. So the scripture there says, be imitators of me. And then I found another scripture in the book of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children. See, again, he says to be imitators of him. And then in Galatians chapter 3, verse 27, for as many of you as were baptized unto Christ have put on Christ. So once we believe, get baptized, we put on Christ. So we're becoming like Jesus. And then in another scripture, in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 48, you therefore must be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. So the Bible talks about being more like Jesus. So God is a giver. He's a master giver. We cannot outgive God. We know we cannot outgive God. God has given so much to us. And uh, today we're going to learn more about giving and why we need to give. So number one, generosity honors God. So giving is an act of worship. We talked about that before. And it's a recognition of everything you have is a gift, it's a gift from God. So it's an act of worship. So Bible, so Point number one, it honors God. So let's look at some scriptures. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 13. As a result of your ministry, they will give glory to God. For your generosity to them and to all believers will prove that you are obedient to God. To the good news of Christ. And then in Proverbs chapter 14, verse 31, those who oppress the poor insult their maker, but helping the poor honors him. So if we are helping the poor, we are giving our time, our energy, our finances, we are actually honoring God. That's point number one. Point number two, generosity draws me closer to God. Why? Because whatever I invest in is what I'm interested in, right? I won't put my money somewhere where I'm not interested in. So if I invest my time in something, I invest my money in something, I invest my energy, um, whether it's games or a business plan, or whatever I invest my time and money shows how important it is to me. So when I invest in God, and his work, it not only honors God, but it draws me closer to God, closer to him. Because wherever my money goes, it's what attracts me. So I put my money to God's work, it's going to attract me. That means it, it shows that I'm really interested in God's work. So the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 23, it talks about tithing. So the purpose of tithing is to teach you to always put God first in your life. So the Bible talks about the first group or the first 10% of your income should be given back to God. He's not asking for 90%, but just 10% of your income. So basically saying that God, you're number one, everything that I earn comes from you. So the first 10%, of my income, I want to give it back to you. Don't wait until uh, you've used up 
all of your income and then what is left, you give unto God. No, that's not putting God first. You need to put God first. So the first fruit of your income, 10% can give to God. Of course, you are more than welcome to, to give more or whatever you feel like giving. If you want to give more, so be it. But try and give as much as you can to the kingdom of God. And I read a story um, of a man who founded a two things. His name was William Colgate. He was a giver. William Colgate was tidying throughout his whole career, business career. He gave not just 10% of his earnings, but um, he, he initially gave 10%. And then as the years go by, he started to increase his giving. He gave two tenths and then three tenths. And finally, he gave five tenths of his income to the work of God. So William Colgate died in 1957, but left behind a company that is still successful to today. Why? Because he was, he put God first. He gave. He didn't take everything for himself, but he gave. And today we know that Colgate is a very successful company. We all use Colgate. I use Colgate every day. And uh, it reminds me of this man. William Colgate, who gave. He gave so much and his company is so successful even after he has gone. <clears throat> so five reasons uh, why tithing is going to benefit you a lot. <clears throat> a lot is, here are some reasons why tithing is good. Tithing helps you to trust God. Tithing helps you to have faith in God's provision. You believe God will provide all of your needs, so you give the first step of your income, and God will bless you with more. Tithing helps you to obey God in what is precious to you. Your money is so precious to you, but if you give it to God, you are being obedient. Tithing helps you to be more generous. Tithing helps you to understand the real source of faith. Your income is not your own doing. It's God blessing you through other people, God blessing you through a job, through a business. Everything that you own comes from God. So why is tithing so, so powerful? It shows that he has 100% of your heart. God knows that if we give back the first 10%, we have placed him before our finances, our, before our money. Tithing tells God that he is the number one in your life. So why is it so simple? Why is it so important? It's very simple. It shows that God is number one in your life. There's another scripture in Proverbs chapter 6, verse 21. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So it's simply saying wherever you put your money, there is where your heart is going to be. So if you want to be closer to God, you may put some money there. It will draw you closer to God. That's point number two. Point number three, uh, generosity makes me and you more like Jesus. So generosity makes us more like him. Why? Because the most generous person who ever lived was none other than Jesus Christ. He sacrificed his own life. He gave his own life. And the Bible says that we have been saved because of the generosity of Jesus. So every time you give your time, your money, anything, you are actually becoming more like Jesus. <clears throat> every time you give, your heart grows bigger. So the more you give, the more you become like him. There's a scripture in the book of Proverbs, chapter 21 and verse 26. Some people are always greedy for more, but the godly love to give. So basically, the scripture says that the more godlier you become, the more generous you are. And it also works in reverse. The more generous you are, the more godlier you are going to become. 
it makes you more like him. And then in the book of Luke chapter 11, verse 41, so clean the inside by giving gifts to the poor and you will be clean all over. In other words, purity is the best demonstration for generosity. One way to live a holy life is to be a giver. It makes me and you more like Christ. God doesn't want your money. He's not interested in your money at all. <clears throat> but your money is not going to be yours after you have left this world, after you die. <clears throat> all the money that you earn, all the things that you have in life, it is not yours. God just loaned it to you what belongs to him. He is the source of all that you have. Everything that you have belongs to Jesus. He made you in charge of it. He just put you in charge of it to take care of it, but it all belongs to Jesus. <clears throat> and uh, God put you in charge of these things because he loves you. So the reason why you have these things is because he loves you so much. He could take away everything in an instant. Likewise, he can also give you the same, uh, 10 times the amount that you have in an instant. Instantly, he can bless you 10 times or 100 times, whatever it is. He just wants you to learn how to be unselfish. Why? Because God is a generous God and it makes giving makes me more like Christ. He gave and he wants us to give as well. Point number four, generosity is the cure for materialism. So materialism is all about getting, getting, getting. It's about taking it, acquiring, hoarding. I got to get this, I got to get that, I got to buy this new thing, this new watch. Everything <clears throat> out there in this world, every material in this world is not going to make you happy. But giving is going to make you really, really happy. Jesus says this in Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. God wants you to enjoy life. You don't know what you're really living for until you break the grip of materialism in your life. So giving can set you free from materialism. You cannot serve both God and money. You simply can't. It's impossible. He didn't say that you should not. He said very clearly in the scriptures that you can't. You can't have two gods in your life. You have to decide what is more important to you, being rich or serving God. What is more important to me? Is God more important to me? Is God more important in my life? Or my finances? You can't have two gods. In a consumer-driven culture, we live in a consumer-driven culture, and uh, it's really hard to fight materialism. It's very easy to get caught up in uh, the things of this world, uh, the new phone, the new computer, the new MacBook, and uh, the new uh, iPhone that, is going to, that was recently released. And uh, when you see the advertisement, you see the catalogs and the billboards on the new iPhone 15, you feel like you want, to, you want to get it because, you know, you are being materialistic. And Satan likes to put in all these uh, negative thoughts in your mind and, you know, try to convince you to, to go and get it and uh, be more like, you know, show off and buy expensive uh, clothes and watches and shoes and and lots of things, but giving actually is a cure for materialism. There's a scripture in the book of First Timothy, chapter 6, verse 17 to 19. The Bible says, uh, teach those who are rich in this world not to be proud and not to trust their money, which is so reliable. Their trust should be in God, 
who richly gives us all we need for our enjoyment. And then in verse 18, tell them to use their money to do good. They should be rich in good works and generous to those in need, always being ready to share with others. Whatever it is, your time, your money, your talents, your skill, share with others. By doing this, and then in verse 19, it says, by doing this, they will be storing up their treasures as a good foundation for the future so they may experience true life. So God wants you to enjoy life. You, you don't really know what you're living for until you break the grip of materialism in your life. So that's point number four. It's a cure for materialism by giving some of your finances. Point number five, generosity demonstrates my faith. So every time you give, it demonstrates your faith because it shows that you are trusting in God, in the promises of God. It shows that you believe in God, that he will take care of all your needs. So you give. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 13, the Bible says, um, as a result of your ministry, they will give glory to God. And then it goes on to say, for your generosity to them and to all believers will prove that you are obedient to the good news of Christ. Then it was, uh, sorry, in the book of Philemon chapter 1 and verse 6, and I'm praying that you will put into action the generosity that comes from your faith as you understand and experience all the good things we have in Christ. You are generous because of your faith. Stinginess is because of unbelief, because you don't believe that God will take care of you. I don't believe that if I give this away, I will, will, won't have enough for myself. That's anxiety or fear. You, you worry about not having enough. So you withhold. Stinginess is caused by unbelief. So if you are generous, your, you being generous is because of your faith. And in the book of Malachi, chapter 3 and verse 10, the Bible says, Bring all tithes into the storehouse, so there will be enough food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord of heavens, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great that you won't have enough room to take it. I like these words. I use these words a lot when I talk about giving or even in prayers. It's a really good Bible word. He says that he will if you give, he will open the windows of heaven. He will pour out blessings that is so great that you cannot even contain. You won't have enough room to contain the blessing. So God is challenging you. God says, I dare you. So in the Bible, the way to prove that God exists is by tithing and see if God blesses you with more and more. It actually demonstrates your faith. And number six, generosity reveals my character. So it shows what kind of heart you really have. It shows, do I have a selfish heart or do I have an unselfish heart? In my office, um, there's a sports club. And we, from time to time, we get invitations to join the sports club. And uh, to join this club, we actually have to pay a certain amount. It's only like 10. 10 ringgit to be a member of the sports club. And there's lots of benefits and, and uh, perks and all you benefit from being part of the, the sports club in my company or in my office. So when the, the sports director or the human resources manager announced who is interested, very few people would participate. When it comes to giving money, very few people would get involved. They keep quiet. Nobody wants to give. Nobody wants to gain a deduction from their paycheck just because of sports club. So it shows what kind of character they have. 
So some people have the me, give me, give me, give me kind of attitude. But generosity actually reveals your character. Do I have a generous heart or do I have a stingy heart? Giving shows that my, what my heart is really like. In fact, the Bible said God uses money to test what really is inside of you. And he uses money to test to see if, you, if God can really trust you with more and more finances. And he says, if you are faithful with the little things, I will give you more things. It shows what kind of heart you really have. It shows that I do have a selfish heart or I do have an unselfish heart. Do I have a generous heart or do I have a stingy heart? Giving or shows my heart is really like. So are we going to, do I uh, support the breakfast program that we have in church, Kana Kitchen, or do I keep all my money for myself? If you're faithful with what you own, God will give you greater blessings in eternity. You may not realize it, but his rewards and responsibilities you have in heaven are going to be based on how you manage your finances here on earth. Yes, it is written in the Bible. Some of you may not believe me, but take a look at this verse. In the book of Luke, chapter 16, verse 11, the Bible says this very clearly. And if you are untrustworthy about worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches of heaven? If you don't manage your money well, if you're not generous with it, nobody will trust you with riches in heaven. God won't. Your responsibilities and rewards in heaven is going to be built on how you manage your wealth and money here on earth or how you handle what was given to you here on earth right now. Here you are being trained. You are in school. You are in school to develop yourself for eternity. So that's point number six. Moving on to point number seven. Giving brings God's blessing. If you want God's blessing in your life, you must learn not to be stingy. You must learn to be open-minded, open-handed with what God gives to you. Helping other people with everything you've got. Uh, the more you give away your time, your energy, I'm not just talking about money. I'm talking about your time, your energy, your treasures, your talents, your skills. These are all part of giving. So giving brings God. God's blessing. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 29, oh, I'm sorry, Proverbs 22, verse 9. Blessed are those who are generous because they feed the poor. So giving bring, brings God's blessing. The scripture says, blessed are those who are generous because they feed the poor. In other words, generous people will be blessed. Either you believe it or you don't believe it. God said it and it is true. I believe it. And uh, moving forward to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 15, verse 10, the scripture says, Give generously to the poor, not grudgingly, for the Lord your God will bless you in everything that you do. So giving brings God's blessing. The Bible says God will bless you if you give, not grudgingly. You want God to bless you, give generously generously. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7 to 8. You must each decide in your heart how much you want to give. And don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure. For God loves a person who gives cheerfully. Or in other words, God loves a cheerful giver. Don't go and give because Brother Cornelius said that, you know, you must give and uh, you feel the pressure and uh, because of this message, you need to go and give, give, give. No, God won't honor that. God loves a cheerful giver. Give how much you can afford. Give generously and give if you're not sure 
what to give, how to give. Pray about it. Pray about it and ask God to direct you. And then you give. Don't give blindly and feel sad about it. That's not the way God wants you to give. And when you give, you will have plenty of leftover to share with others. Point number eight, generosity increases my happiness, your happiness. So generosity increases our happiness. Everybody knows this. The only people who don't know this are the people who do not give, who does not like to give. In Acts chapter 20, verse 35, it says this, and I have been a constant example of how you can help those in need by working hard. You should remember the words of the Lord Jesus. It is more blessed to give than to receive. There is more happiness in giving than in receiving. So when I was a little kid, uh, during Christmas, I looked forward to receiving presents from my family members, from my parents, my uncles, my aunts. <clears throat> The joy comes from what I got from other people and not what I gave. I didn't really care what I gave to other people. In fact, back then I was a small kid and I couldn't afford to buy anything for other people. So I, I just looked forward to receiving Christmas presents from underneath the Christmas tree and it brings so much happiness. I look forward for Christmas because of the presents that I'm going to get from other people. But back then, I was a kid and I was immature. Today, my joy comes from watching other people unwrap their gifts. I've given to others gifts. And why? Because I matured and I stopped being a self-centered person that I must receive, receive, receive. I want to give. But unfortunately, some people never grow up. They are 70 years old, 80 years old but they still, it's all about themselves. They never learn how to give. Generosity extends my influence. Point number nine. So the more generous you become, the more influential you will become. So influence comes not from what you get in life, but influence comes from what you give away. In life. The more you give, the more influential you will be. There is a difference in being famous and being influential. There are lots of famous people out there, but not influential at all. And there are lots of selfish people who are famous, but they don't have real influence at all. Influence comes from generosity. The more you give, the more influential you will become. So there's a scripture in the book of Proverbs chapter 11 verse 24. Give freely and become wealthier. Be stingy and lose everything. The world of the generous gets larger and larger and larger and the world of the stingy actually gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Your influence will get smaller and smaller if you are stingy. In the book of Psalms, chapter 112 and verse 9, they share freely and give generously to those in need. Their good deeds will be remembered forever. They will have influence and honor. You want legacy? Help the poor. The need, they need lots of help. And I found this true in my life. The more generous I became, the more influential I become. If you want to be more like Jesus, then you've got to start giving more. You will never be able to outgive God. He is the best giver. Nobody can outgive God. However, you try to get closer to Jesus by simply giving. Um, I know a minister. His name is Brother Iswara from Penang. He's one example of a giver. He owns a restaurant. And I remember during the pandemic, he would make packets of food, load them into his car, 
and take it to a place to give to the need, needy. Lots of people will line up to receive his lunchbox. People from all ages, young, middle aged, older people, they would get a lunchbox and some water. And that was so generous of him. May God bless him and his church, his ministry. We can learn from him and help others. And uh, it is more blessed to give, the Bible says, than to receive. The more you give, God is going to bless you with more. So Brother Iswara started with just 50 packets. And then maybe a week or a few weeks later, he, he went up to 100 packets and 200 packets. And now he gives about 100, sorry, 500 over packets of food to the needy. If one packet costs about 10 ringgit, that's about 5,000 worth of food given away to the needy. And uh, his giving went up, so did his influence. Today, he pastors a, a much bigger church than he was compared to when he first started. Many people were so touched by his generosity. And when he started to give, his ministry started to grow. He used his money to help other people. And because of that, God has blessed him so much. With his generosity came the additional influence. So giving is going to grow your influence among people around you, in your area, in your community, in your church, your family. You are going to be blessed by giving. Point number 10. Generosity multiplies your finances. There's a lot of Bible words in this. The Bible says this in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 25. The generous will prosper. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. And then in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 11, you will be enriched in every way so that you can always be generous. And when we take your gifts to those who need them, they will thank God. In other words, it means you will be enriched so that you can give more. When God sees you giving, he will bless you with more finances so that you can give more to others. Such a powerful word. God says, you give to me, and I'll give you more. You give to others, and I will give you even more. And you can play this game of generosity, and you will see who wins. Every time you give, God will give you more. The more you give, the more God will give you. So you cannot outgive God. God will always win the generosity game. He always wins. Point number 11. Generosity brings God's protection. A lot of people don't know this, that it actually brings God's protection onto your life, your family, your business, your career. In the book of Psalms, chapter 112, verse 5 to 6, good comes from those who lend money generously and conduct their business fairly. Such people will not be overcome by evil. Those who are righteous will be long remembered. So when you are generous, God says you will not be overthrown by evil. Even in tough times, you will be blessed. Even in the pandemic, whatever the situation is, God will protect you. God, general, uh, and the final point, generosity will be rewarded in heaven. We see this in um, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 18 to 19. Verse 18 says, Tell them to use their money to do good. They should be rich in good works and generous to those in need, always being ready to share with others. By doing this, they will be storing up their treasures as good foundation for the future so that they may experience true life. Money is to be used. It is not to be loved. It is to be used. You use your money, you love people. You love your money, you are going to start 
using people. Money is a tool. Money is neither good nor bad. It's just neutral. You can use it for good. You can use it for bad. There's nothing evil about money. It's, it's neutral. But some people say that money is evil, but no. Here's what the Bible says. The love for money is the root of all evil. You are to love people and use money to bless them, not reverse, not love money. So you use your money to do good is the only and safe investment in heaven. So how do you save your money in heaven? How do you store money up in heaven? You can't take your money with you to heaven. The Bible says that when you die, everything, you have to leave, leave everything behind. You can't take your money, your car, your house, your, your gold, your jewelry, your laptop, nothing. Everything that you own will be left behind. So how do we invest our money in heaven? You do this by investing good in other people who are going there, getting them, a, getting them a strong and uh, maybe buying a Bible for them or uh, sponsoring their trip to a uh, candidate or inviting them to church, taking them out for lunch, investing in other people's life, talking to them about Jesus, teaching Bible study, spending your money on people who are going to heaven is a safe and good investment in heaven. The Bible says in the book of Luke chapter 16, verse 9, Here's a lesson. Use your worldly resources to benefit others and make friends. Then when your possessions are gone, they will welcome you to an eternal home. That was verse 9. He's not saying go out and buy some friends. That's not what he meant. But God is saying, take some of your money and use it to build bridges of friendship to bring people to Christ who are going to be saved. And they're going to go to heaven with you. And when you go to heaven, those people in heaven are going to say, hey, you're here. Thank you. You gave some money. You brought me to Jesus. And because of you, I'm here. And is anybody going to heaven because of the way you use your money? <clears throat> I'm going to use a lot of my resources to spend on other people that are going to heaven. Because I want to store my treasures in heaven. I don't want the worldly treasures. The things of the world is going to remain in this world. I can't take it with me to heaven. So I want to invest in other people's life. And uh, some years back, I remember there was uh, two uh, little girls, um, Sunday school children, they used to come to our church. In fact, uh, um, Sister Lucia used to babysit them. Uh, their names are Nicole and Janice. They used to come to some of our Sunday surveys and go for Sunday school. And they would wear some really short pants and, you know, come to church. So one day um, on their birthday or was it Christmas, I don't remember, I bought them a nice, beautiful dress. And I told them, how beautiful they look, how um, wonderful they look in this dress. And they used to like to watch uh, a show called Frozen. Uh, some of you may know that, that, that movie, Frozen. And the two actresses are called uh, Elsa and Anna. Some of you may know that, that show, that actress. And these two kids, they lo love that show very much. They always like to watch on YouTube or on their on my phone or on my iPad. They like to watch that show Frozen. They watch it hundreds and hundreds of times and never get bored with the show. And in that show, these two um, her characters, Elsa and Anna, they wear really nice, pretty dresses. And one day I bought a dress that looks like that. That looks like this uh, character, this uh, character in that show. 
and they really love this dress. And every time they come to church, they will wear this this dress and come to church. And uh, starting from that day onwards, they always like to wear dress. When their mother put for them short pants, they say, "No, I want to wear the dress. I want to look like Elsa, and, and I want to look like a princess." So I invested my finances in other people, other people's life. So likewise, we also need to learn to invest in other people. There are many people out there who are hungry for God, who are students, for example, they are not employed yet. They may not have enough uh, finances. They want to come to church. They want to learn. They may not have enough resources to buy a Bible or to pay for their transport. Maybe some of us young adults or working adults, we can help one of them, you know, buy a Bible, teach them Bible study, spend your time teaching Bible study. I spend a lot of time teaching some of my friends Bible study. And recently, um, I met a brother. His name is Winston. He was walking around the Kapong area and uh, I invited him to come up for service. And he said, okay, and came up for service, for church. And uh, he said he wants Bible study. So I said, yes, I will spend time teaching you Bible study. I can teach you once a week. And uh, I can do whatever it takes to, to, to groom you, to make you more like Jesus. And he was very happy. And recently he texted me and he asked a lot of questions about baptism. He's very interested in uh, baptism. He wants to know more about baptism. He wants to get baptized in the near future. And I told him, um, I need to teach you first about baptism. We don't simply baptize people without teaching them. So we may need to spend some time and learning about baptism before we can baptize you. And he also asked a lot of questions about where do we get baptized, whether it's in a swimming pool or it's in a river or it's in a sea or it's a baptist tank. I told him, just yesterday, I told him, uh, we only baptize people in a baptist tank. And he said, okay, that's fine, but uh, can I make a request? I want to be baptized in a river. I want to be different. I said, no problem. We can talk about it. We will talk to the pastor and see if the pastor is uh, willing to baptize you uh, in a river. And I told him we will talk more about baptism um, on Sunday when he comes again. He's going to come again this Sunday. And I'm going to spend time talking to him about Christ, about the plan of salvation, about water baptism. And uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm giving my time and energy to someone who is going to make it to heaven. So I, I'm investing my in, I'm investing my treasures in heaven by spending some time on these people. So likewise, we need to give not just our finances, but also our time, our energy, our talent, our knowledge, whatever we have. It came from God and we want to give to others. We want to invest in others. So where do I keep my greatest wealth here on earth? Where I get to use it for 80 to 90 years or in heaven where I get to use it forever and ever and ever. It's your choice. You decide how you want to spend your money, time, energy, talent, skill. The things that God has blessed you with, you decide how you want to spend it and use it. Amen. That is the 12 points that I have for today. And 